Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Um, so um, before starting, I wanted to uh, pick up one last thing uh, that uh, Rev said before, um, which is the, uh, the BDS uh, issue here. That is, I think it, it, I want to actually have five minutes of my own a presentation to uh, alert you of this. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there was um, 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 a project of law in Congress in the US that uh, was against uh, BDS. And what it did, because it couldn't go kind of censor it, uh, they defunded it. So they said that any a corporation that uh, engage in boycotting uh, Israel in any way uh, would not receive public funding. So this is another way of censorship. So this is something that maybe take into account in how, you know, the, um, the, uh, the structures of oppression uh, in, uh, use the tools in order to adapt and to uh, uh, gain power in, in other manners that, that seem legal, but they're not, right? Uh, so um, I'm going to talk about Chile. Um, I'm going to go through um, the history, the, the brief history from October 2019 to today to understand this uh, plebeian rebellion, this rebellion from below, the rebellion of the common people. Um, and um, of course, when I wrote my the abstract and I was thinking about it, um, the 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 presentation, um, the plebiscite was not all not, was not there yet. The result and the plebiscite yielded a rejection of the draft constitution, and um, it, there were many things involved. But I want you to I want to kind of uh, give you an idea of that a uh, movement and uh, the dangers and challenges uh, that opens. Okay. So I brought some slides just to for you to um, see a, a part of the um, a, how the protest looked like. Um, <clears throat> I have been documenting this for a while. So um, basically, um, I, I label it in, uh, in the in the um, title uh, a revolution, uh, thinking that maybe the people would accept the new constitution and that really the revolution would be materialized. However, it only ended in rebellion uh, or in a, you know, failed um, kind of Thermidorian, a very conservative process that was crafted from above. Uh, but still, there is um, a popular resurgence now after the uh, rejection. So first, uh, Chile has been always a poster child for neoliberalism. Um, it, it has always had like great numbers. Um, just before the uh, the rebellion, the uprising, um, you look at the numbers and it's really great. It looks great. There's low unemployment. Uh, we are the 18th uh, most uh, free economy of the world, which means we are open and have trade agreements with everyone. Uh, there's no protection for national industry. We are one of the cleanest, supposedly, uh, countries in the world, uh, number 24. Um, and there's low inflation, and we have a very high per capita income. Uh, now it's almost $20,000 a year, which is pretty great. And we're part of the uh, European and, and uh, rich countries club. However, uh, there's also there's a, another B side to this. And this is inequality. We are the 20th most unequal country in the world. Uh, we allocate the richest 1% and basically own a third of the national wealth. Uh, and that is increasing actually with the pandemic. It was doubled uh, what they had uh, some of the families. Um, if you see that the distribution, uh, even if we have uh, in, in that uh, $17,000 um, uh, a year in terms of uh, per capita income, really the minimum wage is 447. So this is, uh, and, and, and you see that the difference with how much the president earns or a politician. Uh, we have the best, polit the best paid politicians uh, almost in the world relative to uh, what, uh, what is the uh, national income, okay, and the, and the, and the wages. So we have been living in a socioeconomic apartheid in a way. Uh, if you were born and you are part of a, of a, um, a neighborhood that is um, working class, you will live 18 years in average less than a, a person that is born in a high income neighborhood. This is how brutal it is. There's um, all kinds of different uh, things that uh, uh, that makes uh, all the um, the systems uh, private, and everybody has the public system, which is defunded and and uh, precarious. So there is a world for the rich and a world for the poor. 
So this brought us to the popular uprising of October 18th, 2019, uh, which was enabled by um, a small increase in the subway fare in Santiago, in the capital, um, and that uh, prompted uh, a massive civil disobedience uh, campaign by high school students. So high school, high, high school students um, uh, called for uh, evade the fair, not pay as another way to struggle against the system. And this prompted uh, many, first when one, two schools, one of uh, historically uh, a very a good kind of public schools um, from a males and other females, girls and boys, and then others, other schools uh, started doing the same. And this was being copied like a snowballing effect of repertoires of contention. And this was part of, I would say, a long a repertoire of a cycle of contention in which uh, that started in 2011, also with high school students protesting against the education system based on the voucher, in which basically uh, the we have to buy half of the of the uh, education in order to have a decent one. The the public one is really not good, and uh, the other is just subsidized, and you have to uh, pay for yourself. Um, and there's not very a lot of monitoring. Um, then uh, healthcare protests uh, also because of the high uh, prices of um, of drugs. Here you see uh, an old woman with with uh, all her medication here hanging. Right, uh, pensions are uh, basically uh, misery pensions below the minimum wage. Eighty percent of our seniors are in basically poverty. Uh, there is in, a lot of uh, gender violence, so also a lot of feminist pro protests. Uh, there are 900 encampments in Chile where people live without electricity or running water. Uh, so therefore, there are a, a move. There is a movement uh, for housing for people that do not have house uh, home, uh, for the transport, for the increased pollution, and we um, for uh, those uh, for. Do you have an idea of the production matrix of Chile? We are a mining, um, a mining country. So therefore, there's a lot of residues coming from mining. And because mining is done by transnational corporations with little limitation, then there are zones in, in Chile uh, which are uh, deemed as sacrifice zones the zones of sacrifice. So basically this community needs to just live in pollution and have cancer uh, in order for us to have like the revenue uh, that comes from taxes from these corporations that uh, extract uh, the minerals. And also we have uh, indigenous racism, basically racism against indigenous peoples. So all these demands and all these movements that have been protesting since 2011 crystallized in the uh, petition for a new constitution. People understood that it was not about individual demands at the end, it was about the structure and that the constitution written by General Pinochet and uh, the, his advisors basically during the, during the dictatorship needed to go and needed to be changed for a new constitution. It was a very kind of a sensible thing to be asking. Uh, and this basically, um, it, there was a movement since the beginning, so since 1980, where when the Pinochet constitution was approved in a plebiscite, supposedly free in a dictatorship, um, there was a movement that began asking for a constituent assembly, an assembly of the people to write a new constitution that would be uh, pro-people in a way, in favor of the people and um, limiting the power of oligarchy. Uh, this um, um, prompted many uh, many protests, and uh, in a few in, in a few days, uh, with the uh, subway um, evasions and all the other protests that uh, started to again flare up, uh, the government uh, lost control of the uh, movement, and uh, there were um, uh, stations that were closed. The students just opened them by force, and there were no way that people could stop them. So. Uh, there were multiple metro stations and on a Friday, October 18th, uh, and that were set ablaze uh, at the same time uh, in multiple places in the city. OK, and this has never been investigated. They until today, we don't know who burned the subway stations. And if you think about the subway stations, they're not made out of wood, but of metal. So therefore, it's not easy to burn them. You need a special knowledge of where to set the fire. And that fire needs to be set where the electrical central system is. And you need a special acid to dissolve you know, all the metal around it that is protecting it. So um, it, this was a concerted uh, effort in a way. And the government immediately after this happened 
called the military for the first time in democracy to go and impose order and repress its own population. Uh, there was a set of a, a state of exception, and this is a picture of the entrance of Baquedano Station, which is in the uh, Dignity Square, which was renamed Dignity Square um, uh, after uh, after it was closed and, and basically um, abandoned. And uh, a repression started immediately uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, and viral videos went, uh, you know, uh, people were filming this. And uh, there were five different reports of human rights violation against uh, the government in Chile and the use of uh, what I call repertoires of repression of a certain um, a modes of dealing with protest and of torturing people and abusing people that you could see in many places in Chile uh, being used uh, in a systematic fashion. So here there's a mural and here I'm going to I'll show you a lot of murals uh, in the city uh, and they said aquí se tor aquí torturan. here they torture. And this is I was a way of uh, and this was in the Baquedano station that I showed you where it was close and it was a torture place. And basically the, the cops would bring you and then torture you there and then release you. Uh, so it was a torture center basically for a few days. Uh, there was a, and here some images of, you know, uh, the, the protests always uh, some was peaceful, some was, was more, more violent. However, what really marked uh, the, the repression was the mutilation of eyes uh, from the people. Basically, more than 400 people lost one or both eyes uh, and uh, by, with the use of um, a, a pellet guns. And this is something that, um, at least as I've been told, there is a collaboration between the Israeli police and the Colombian police and the French police uh, uh, in terms of this um, repertoires of repression. Uh, this were used also to um, um, shots on the knee, for example. There's something that is also have been used uh, in the Palestinian and Israeli border, basically, uh, and uh, also the uh, mutilation of eyes. And uh, there was huge protest. Nothing was done about the human rights violations. So we are, we're back at a dictatorship kind of style repression uh, and uh, with all eyes on us, basically, with many uh, reports, officials, and nothing happened and nothing came out of it. Uh, a lot of um, imagery came, came from this. Uh, so there, here we see uh, President Piñera sitting with the ghost of uh, General Pinochet and the Bernardo Higgins, who is the father of the of the of the patria you know, the, of Chile, who is the conqueror basically, and who pacified the indigenous populations uh, and made you know a unitary Chile. So very kind of like this this history is all uh, connected, and this is how people started seeing um, the president. Uh, there's this is famous mural um, uh, hasta que haya justicia until it's just there is justice. Uh, knowing that there may be non-justice because Pinochet actually died in his home in, in a very, um, because he was senile supposedly and uh, never saw a uh, jail, a prison cell. So this is a mural in Poblacion El Castillo, who was a, 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 a Poblacion, which is a kind of a, a working class neighborhood um, that was very militant during the dictatorship. And they um, basically wanted the president to be imprisoned and dead, basically. This was part of the uh, rhetoric. The same, the same neighborhood would vote against the draft constitution that would allow for the dismantling of the system. So that's how crazy the result was. So uh, out of this um, tumult, basically, for a month of repression and videos and, and really people die deaths and, and, and mutilation, um, the uh, president was saved. We, we were thinking about the president would leave in a helicopter kind of a situation. Uh, we were wrong where the political class came to save him. Uh, and uh, here we see uh, all of the right wing coalition, plus some of the old Concertación people who are the neoliberal left, right? The left that sold itself to the system, plus uh, the uh, the now current president uh, Gabriel Boric there sitting on the front. 
Uh, and this and this pact allowed for an, a constituent process and the election of a, a convention. However, the convention was uh, had a two thirds supermajority for every article, which meant that the conservative forces would have veto power. Uh, there was no political participation in the uh, binding political participation that would force or uh, allow for meaningful participation of the people in the constituent process. So a process that started from below with the students. Uh, in which the students uh, could not participate because they are minors, they cannot vote, right? Um, so that process was co-opted by the political class and uh, channeled through the electoral process, which is a process that is already rigged and controlled by them. So the people immediately alien uh, alienated and people kept protesting. People didn't care about this pact. Uh, they didn't, the, the politicians thought that the people would basically clap and be happy that a constituent process was open. Uh, they didn't care, they just kept protesting and kept meeting uh, as nothing happened. So we had um, local heroes, uh, we call it La Primera Linea, the first line of defense. Uh, and is basically there's a repertoire of contention every Friday after the first uprising, commemorating the first uprising um, in Plaza Dignidad and every square in, some, in Chile uh, where people would meet and confront the police. There was uh, decolon decolonizing practices, as we saw also in the UK lately, uh, with the uh, getting rid of uh, old um, statues of colonizer in the Mapuche region, in the region of the indigenous peoples. Um, there were this, what I was telling you, about the first line of defense, these plebeian superheroes, basically. Uh, we had this guy that always was there in, in, in the square. Uh, they, we called, well, not we, the, the people called them a party man, the stop man, because basically he just grabbed one of the signs and he was this shield and he would go and confront the police, protecting the other people that was uh, um, protesting. We had a guy uh, dressed as a Spider-Man, uh, Pikachu. We have all these kind of popular characters, people just going and, and, and making a performance of the resistance against the, uh, the forces of order. Also, we had intervention of the public space. So in the middle of Plaza Dignidad, this epicenter of the rebellion, there's this, um, this um, a statue of, uh, a, of a general, a colonizing judge, colonizer, right? So um, it, we could not get rid of it. People wanted to get rid of it, but they couldn't. So they intervened it uh, to basically undermine uh, its power. Uh, and in the left, we had the feminist movement also intervening in the, 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 the statue. We also had another repertoire of contention, uh, cycling protests to evade arrest. There was a new law that I was, actually was uh, approved by the current president when he was in Congress that penalizes any person that participates in a protest that blocks the street. So it's called the anti-barricade law. So if you are in a protest, a mass protest, and the, and the traffic is, is stopped, the, the, the police can legitimately arrest you and you can, you're risking three years in jail. OK, so the cycling protests that are protests in movement were became, became very, uh, very popular and masses of cyclists just went in the streets and they had like a, a, a route and they would go and protest and would basically paralyze the, the traffic in another manner. Uh, very clever. We have, of course, the murals. We had a lot of uh, coming back of Salvador Allende, the president that nationalized copper and that was ousted by the Pinochet dictatorship. Uh, there are, this is a, a, another one that says they're not terrorists nor criminals. They're uh, conscious students, you know, trying to, the, 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 all the murals are always uh, trying to um, give this message. There was uh, also a, a, a huge uh, movement for gender equality. Uh, we have, we had the uh, Las Tesis, which was was this, um, uh, this uh, collective that um, created this, uh, move, this um, song, this performance, uh, El Violador Eres Tu, the, the Rapist Is You, uh, which we brought the state and the, and the judges in, and all the patriarchal society into this performance. So this is a death to the, to the patriarchy. We had a, a lot of like a lesbian and, and, and gay imagery in general. Uh, advocating for gender equality and for acceptance. This was something that uh, was all ac across the, 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 the cities. Um, and also we had repertoires of repression. Um, this is a, a cop attacking a human rights defender. So they would go with their orange shirts and they would actually become the target. 
So media and human rights defenders, observers, were uh, targeted by police and were repressed even more than the, uh, than the protesters. Um, there were other uh, repertoires of repression once people were arrested um, uh, by, with, um, from sexual abuse, from, uh, uh, from a, a, a forced a, a nakedness, basically, uh, many things that were uh, very um, degrading and um, um, they, they were copied in, in many places. Uh, then uh, in terms of the, also the, the repertoires of contention that uh, after the first year that we were in pandemic, which was very difficult uh, for the movement, um, uh, there were commemorations of the uprising. And here you see a little bit of, of what was done. Uh, here you see in the, in the one on the left, the, uh, the flag of the Mapuche uh, people who are actually the, uh, um, uh, they are deemed the Palestinians of the South because they live also in um, surrounded by a colonial settler state and have been uh, putting up a resistance since the Spaniards came uh, to Chile, basically. Uh, and, and they are um, treated as de facto second class citizens. And um, the Mapuche imagery and, and cosmology and, and, and the flag is, was at the center of this rebellion, uh, even though they're only 9% um, or less than of the population. Um, and then we had the presidential campaign in between all this process. So the convention was elected, it was working, and we had in the middle presidential campaign in 2021 at the end, a few months ago, six months ago. And uh, basically we had two choices. One was the uh, son of a neo-Nazi, uh, sorry, of a Nazi soldier that emigrated to Chile and collaborated with the Pinochet dictatorship. So we had like the actual like devil incarnate on one side. And on the other, we had this, student leader who sold himself as a social democrat uh, who basically wanted to take the flag of Antifa. We, we, he's, he defined himself as the anti-fascist, uh, uh, but however, he embraced um, a kind of a center-left neoliberalism, uh, a, a very a kind of a, um, a a, a strange a combination of ideologies that are very kind of pragmatic in a way that very systemic. And um, people celebrated him as kind of like a, the new messiah uh, in this moment. Um, however, uh, he was uh, immediately, his approval rating went down because what happened was that the people voted for and uh, against the fascist, but not for him. So basically, immediately that that million and a half votes that we, he got, they 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 were basically uh, gone into the opposition. So the draft that was voted in for the fourth of the September uh, of this year, um, uh, it, the, all the, the the media landscape was uh, <clears throat> was full of fake news and, and misinformation. Uh, from the government, from the politicians, from the all the media is in hands of the right wing oligarchy. So basically, there was a mounted campaign against it, and there was no information coming from the government. There was no letters sent. The people didn't know about the process. Uh, the only information came from TV, and TV was co-opted by these forces. Uh, there was because there was lack of popular participation from the beginning. The kind of like a, the extreme or or a paramilitary left, or no paramilitary par para-parliamentary or extra-parliamentary left uh, immediately denounced the process uh, and um, saw it as a treason. Uh, and they were, uh, the Boric government uh, was, the approval rating was in the lower 30s. So um, if we combine all this of this uh, in factors and in addition, people were forced to vote uh, against a heavy fee, uh, fine. Uh, so people were forced to vote, so they voted reject and the same kind of militant neighborhoods that had uh, uh, gone out in protest against the system voted against replacing the Pinochet constitution with a better, more progressive constitution that was still you know, faulty in many ways, uh, but, um, but still better. And today uh, we have, and with, with this I end, um, uh, we have uh, uh, the, a new process supposedly being negotiated right now, again, by the political class, uh, which has like 3% approval across the board, uh, that basically the people elected to office have no legitimacy, uh, and they are negotiating a process that will be led uh, more likely by experts and will exclude popular participation even more. Um, and, um, and so we are in a, in a heavy crisis, which brings a lot of um, 
uh, challenges, but also possibilities, because when things break, uh, they, we, some new things come, come out of it. Thank you.